Hello there and welcome to Level Update. For October 14, 2025, the latest Bureau of Reclamation report shows Lake Powell standing at 3,544.63 feet. That's roughly 155 feet below its full pool elevation of 3,700 feet. Yet this week, something remarkable happened. After months of steady decline, Lake Powell's water level finally turned upward, rising about 0.6 feet in just a few days. And the reason behind this unexpected boost is tied directly to the recent flooding in Colorado, hundreds of miles upstream. Now, before we unpack that connection, let's look at what this number really means. At this elevation, Powell contains around 2.19 trillion gallons of water, or about 27.7% of its total capacity. That's a long way from full, but the change in direction, an actual increase, is the first positive sign the lake has shown since mid-summer. For weeks, inflows from the Colorado River had been trailing behind outflows through Glen Canyon Dam. Water releases to downstream users and power generation steadily lowered the lake, inch by inch. But starting around October 10th, gauges at the river's headwaters began to record a sharp rise in flow. Heavy rainfall and rapid runoff from flooding in parts of western Colorado sent a surge of muddy, debris-laden water rushing toward the Colorado River system. Within days, that extra volume began to reach Powell. On the data chart, the turnaround is clear. Between October 2nd and October 9th, the lake fell from 3544.55 feet down to 3544.0. Then, as floodwaters moved through the tributaries, the curve bent upward. From October 10th through October 13th, the surface climbed back up to 3544.63 feet, a net gain of roughly 7 inches. For a reservoir this massive, that equals tens of billions of gallons of new water. Total inflows for the 2026 water year now stand at 207,777 acre-feet, which is already 87% of the October average, even though we're only midway through the month. Meanwhile, total releases from Glen Canyon Dam are at 204,022 acre-feet. That small gap between inflows and outflows is exactly what allowed the lake to rise, and the flood pulse from Colorado is what created that gap. When storms struck the upper Colorado River Basin earlier this month, rainfall totals in certain areas were double the normal October amounts. Runoff rushed down the Gunnison, Dolores, and San Juan rivers, all of which feed into Powell. The temporary floodwaters increased the combined river flow to nearly 150% of the seasonal average. This pulse of water took several days to travel downstream, but once it arrived, the reservoir responded quickly. It's worth noting that the gain came after one of the steepest drops of the year. Over the summer, Powell's surface had fallen nearly 20 feet as releases exceeded inflows to meet lower basin demands. By late September, the reservoir appeared to be stabilizing near its lowest point in months. Then came the Colorado flood, a brief but powerful reminder that weather-driven inflow events can still make a measurable difference even this late in the year. Zooming out to the 12-month trend line, Lake Powell is still down about 32.6 feet from the same date last year. That's a large decline, equivalent to losing billions of gallons of stored water. But this October rise, however modest, breaks the downward pattern. It signals that inflows are finally overtaking releases, even if only for a short window. The floodwaters not only added new volume, they also helped flush sediment and lower water temperatures in some inlet zones. Hydrologists often monitor these sudden pulses closely, since they can affect reservoir mixing and turbidity. Yet in practical terms, the main takeaway is simple. More water arrived than was expected, and it is now being stored in Powell. The depth of water at Glen Canyon Dam currently measures 412.6 feet, which remains well above the minimum threshold needed for hydropower generation. That means turbines can continue operating normally, providing electricity across the southwest, while holding back as much water as possible to rebuild storage. 
Upstream, the 34 tracked reservoirs feeding Lake Powell are sitting at roughly 68.6% of capacity, another sign that the basin, while still under stress, has some cushion left. Inflows for the new water year are running about 147% of last year's pace, boosted directly by the Colorado flood surge. If those inflows remain above releases through late October, Powell could continue inching higher before winter operations begin. Hydrologically, this event shows how even a localized flood hundreds of miles away can ripple through the entire system. The Colorado River begins high in the Rocky Mountains, where every tributary feeds the main stem that flows into Powell. When a major rain system dumps heavy precipitation across those watersheds, that water doesn't stay local. It moves downstream, filling smaller reservoirs first and then contributing to Powell storage days or weeks later. So while we're not talking about a massive recovery, this short-term bump is a valuable demonstration of how quickly things can shift. It also provides a reminder that Powell's balance depends on timing as much as total volume. In this case, a natural flood in the upper basin arrived just when outflows were tapering off for seasonal maintenance, allowing the lake to capture more water than it lost. Going forward, the Bureau of Reclamation will monitor whether this increase holds steady or levels off as the floodwaters subside. Forecast models suggest that inflows will drop back toward average by late October, meaning the current rise might plateau soon. But even if a fraction of this extra inflow remains stored, Powell could enter November slightly higher than expected, a welcome shift after months of decline. The key message today is simple but uplifting. Lake Powell's level has increased, and that increase was caused by the recent Colorado flood. It's not the result of new policy changes or dam adjustments. It's nature's own pulse of water finding its way downstream. Even in a system as complex and managed as the Colorado River, natural events like this can still move the needle. For now, Powell sits at just over a quarter of its full capacity, stable and showing a hint of upward motion. Whether this marks the start of a longer-term stabilization or just a brief reprieve will depend on what happens upstream over the next few weeks. But one thing is certain, the reservoir is responding, and the numbers prove it. Lake Powell's latest data tells a rare good news story. Thanks to the recent flood in Colorado, inflows surged, water levels rose, and the system gained a little breathing room. It's a reminder of how fast things can change, from steady decline to sudden recovery when the rivers deliver more than expected. As the 2026 water year unfolds, we'll keep watching how every storm, every inflow, and every dam release shapes the future of this iconic reservoir.